Hey guys, um, have you ever wondered what if we could bring back the dead? I mean, not like physically, that's gross. Most people agree. But what if we could bring back like one of our favorite old authors? I mean, we've been talking a lot about AI for our own content creation, but another interesting thing about AI is you can feed it um, and train it on books that we have that exist <laughs> that are in your local library. Go check them out now. Um, so I've been thinking about this and I don't, you know, what's, what's this doing here? That's crazy. But, um, you know, I just, it, it's always kind of struck me that like what tends to happen is after a beloved author dies, there's like an allotted amount of time. And then someone says, okay, now I'm going to try and write the next book in the series or whatever. I'm going to, but now we don't need to do that. We have chat trained models you know language models robots that can write books for us and i was thinking about this and this kind of intersected with another thing where i was messing around with mid journey which is an ai that can create images and i was making uh characters from redwall i don't know if you guys remember the redwall series by brian jakes but when i was a kid i absolutely devoured them and um sadly brian jakes passed in 2011 um the last book came out in 2012 maybe, maybe that's what the minds were predicting you know is that brian jakes was gonna die and the last book was gonna come out but you know he, but he left behind 23 novels in the red wall series and uh some other like side series and other stuff not to mention the tv series based on the first book um or maybe the first three books and i think there's a whole generation of kids that are nostalgic for him and i've actually recently gone back and they're still entertaining books um and they still i think have value um and this also kind of intersects with what i was doing with mid journey was i was making the cat that i live with sid i was making him into a redwall character that was the idea so i thought well what if we could write a redwall series a redwall book with sid as a main character and it's trained off redwall books so let's try and see Okay, so where do we start with this? I mean, who was this guy really? Um, let's 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 get a little background information on the guy first, and then and then we'll, then we can get into the the actual writing process. I'm Brian Jakes, and welcome to Redwall Abbey. Okay, so here's the facts about the Redwall series, thanks to ChatGPT, which is how I do all my research now. Total number of books. This is 22. Actually, I did secondary research, and this one's missing one. It doesn't have Doom White on here, which came out in 2008, but uh, it says 22 books. Brian Jakes, born in Liverpool in 1939, so he's like the same age as my grandparents. Uh, worked as a delivery truck driver along Shoreman and a Bobby before becoming a full-time writer. Wrote the first Redwall book in 1986, published in 1987. Uh, Wikipedia talks about that, and um, he uh, he wrote a story, and his his uh, teacher, his former English teacher, actually showed it to his own publishers, and they uh, loved it so much that he was originally given a contract to write five books, or the next five books so six total book and it's 800 pages which like in the 80s for a kid's book was unheard of you know most kids books were like 200 pages um harry potter books obviously also very large but uh, redwall was first <laughs> redwall was doing it first and it talks about here that he had this very visceral style um where he would uh his writing style talks about um smell taste gravity balance temperature touch and kinesthetics not just visual sensation and sound because he he originally wrote the books um for the children of the royal waver tree school for the blind whilst delivering milk to the royal school of the blind he would read books to the children now some of the stuff especially for the older kids that the publishers used to send in i didn't like it was about the now about the here today you know divorce problems with the family and right. teenage angst and, yeah. all, and I surely there must be a bit more imagination to yeah. be had in this yeah what happened to the magic disappointed at what he was reading for the children Brian decided to have a go at writing his own book once upon a time however it was a friend Alan Durban who later persuaded him to get it pub I said it's only a kid's thing Alan I said you, you don't have to waste your fag so um, he said no no give me it here now he took it away and he read and he sent it to his pub with an advice note saying this is one of the best children's stories um, so he began to st spend time with the children and he read the stories to him but he just didn't like the children's books that he was reading at the time he wrote other things as well he wrote um the castaways the flying dutchman series which i never 
I think I read the first one. Uh, you know, he, he did some other s stuff outside of Redwall, but clearly that was what he was kind of in love with. <laughs> Which, like, that's your, that's your major body of work. That's fine, you know? It's good to be in love with your characters and, and want to keep making new stories. And it doesn't just follow the same characters as well. Um, it's like each book is like another generation. And, and, you know, they're talking about these ancient heroes. Mossflower is actually a... Oh, it's the third chronological book? I thought... Mossflower was the, the prequel to Redwall, but then I guess some of these might be also prequels to Mossflower, so... Anyway, I, I read a lot of these books, but I don't know if I ever read all of them. Uh, some of my favorites that stick out, The Long Patrol, which is about the hares, um, The Pearls of Lutra, which is also great, uh, Legend of Luke's pretty good, uh, but to give you like an overview, like these are small woodland creatures, and the world is at their scale. In the first couple books, he does mention like there's a barn, and there's a barn cat, and like a horse-drawn cart, so he kind of alludes to like a human world, but then he started to just take that out completely, and it's like, no, this, this whole thing is just for the creatures. So like they have all these buildings and villages and things but they're all built at the scale of animals which like it's if you think about it too long it doesn't make sense but if you're a kid like it totally makes sense. his name was known all over the world especially by the millions of children who read and loved his book but he never forgot his liverpool route i'm talking about brian jakes author of the red wall series of books who sadly died earlier this month <laughs> Old stories told by travel, great songs that bards have sung of moss flower summers faded gone when red wall stones were young. I never wrote it for publication. Uh, I wrote it as a story to read to the children after school. Uh, a mouse is the child and the child is trying to resolve something, to be better, to be a warrior, to be a hero. And the, if the little mouse can, well, why can't the child? The charm is in, in the characters. They're all animals. There's no humans in them at all. The baddies are the, the rats, stoats, and the, the little happy things, the little dibbons he called a, a little mice. Brian Jakes is a literary giant. His fame spread far beyond Liverpool's shores because of his Red Wall books, which have sold more than 20 million copies worldwide and been translated into 28 different languages. Red Wall books are bestsellers, and his book tours were always sold out. His death. Yeah, I actually met him on a book tour. I actually went on a he came through to right around my birthday. He came through to my like near my grandparents' house. So, it was just like a perfect place and timing and so we went and like I was in middle school, like 6th grade, 7th grade, something like that. Uh and most of the kids there were a lot younger than me. I'll I'll say that. But like I didn't really care. Um I had loved his books so much as a kid i mean i still do and i still did at that time um he had a new book come out i got it signed i got to talk to him i was like embarrassingly shy like i could not talk to this man but my mom said like oh charlie was born in england and he made a joke about drinking tea not throwing it in the ocean uh which was, <laughs> was just super funny he's such a he was so generous with his, with his time and like talking to us and it was really nice to talk to him and then he died like <laughs> Not that long after, so. Death was front page news there. Children from all over the world and from all walks of life have been drawn to his novels, including The Rich and Famous. I had to go to number 10 what? Downing Street. I see Tony and Sherry actually give a chat. The librarian recommended them for, for my eldest son, who's very mad, loved reading uh, as, as a good read. And so as a family, um, we started to get hooked. Then, of course, I moved to Downing Street. Oh, no. And in the course of that, who should turn up did I meet but Brian Jake? And I said to him, of course I know. By by the way, for those who don't know, this is Sherry Blair, former, uh, well, the wife of former Prime Minister Tony Blair. The Americans love that accent. It's been five years since I strolled through Stanley Park with Brian Jake. Okay, well, there's a little intro of him. He's, he was a completely fascinating man. Okay, so there we go. There's a little bit about Brian Jake's and kind of a little bit about the books. They had such a deep lore. The thing that and that was kind of the interesting thing where instead of just focusing on the same characters novel after novel sometimes two or three novels would be about the same characters or recognizable characters which early on i was so interested about because i was like oh i recognize that character from a previous book it was such a great way to connect us to something we'd read before and maybe liked and kind of have these characters as guides to like teach us where we are in the story so you'd see a character in one book and then in the next book they would be aged you know 20 30 years or something like that it was hard to, it's hard to tell the scale of the lives of woodland creatures you know mice only live a couple of years maybe but anyway so there was 
<laughs> a lot of lore, a lot of depth into his books. So do, we, do I really think AI can copy that and mimic that and give me that back? No, not really. <laughs> Is it a clickbaity title? Yeah, probably. But let's at least see what we can get, right? Here's one I just asked it to come up with and just to see if it had the idea. The quiet day at Redwall Abbey. The sun was shining brightly. The abbot Thias was sitting in his study lost in thought when he heard a faint voice calling out to him. At first, he thought it was just his imagination, but the voice grew louder and clearer. Abbot Matthias, Abbot Matthias, come to the gate. Matthias quickly made his way to the gate where he saw a young mouse standing outside. The mouse was panting and sweating and he had a look of urgency on his face. Abbot Matthias, I've come from the north, the mouse said. There is a great danger brewing in the land and I've come to seek your help. What kind of danger? asked Matthias. His heart racing with excitement. A band of evil ferrets has taken over the land, said the mouse. They're terrorizing the creatures of the north and making life unbearable for all who live there. The creatures of the north have come to you for help, Abba Matthias. Will you help us? Matthias didn't hesitate. He'd always been a brave mouse and he was not afraid to take on the challenge. Yes, I will help he said. Gather the Redwallers and let us set out to the north. We'll put an end to this evil once and for all. And so Matthias led a group of Redwallers on a journey to the north where he, they would face their greatest challenge yet. They would face fierce battles, treacherous terrain, and dangerous creatures. But they would not give up. They would not rest until the ferrets were defeated and peace was restored to the land. The story of Matthias and the Red Wallace was just beginning, and there was much adventure and excitement in store for them. And there you have it. That's the opening chapter. Chapter. Yeah, so that's a little straightforward. It's not exactly what we wanted. I also asked for a... Like, I asked for it. So I'm making Sid into a Red Wallace. That's the idea here. In fact, let's do that next. I want to I wanna create my own character and kind of have my own lore for my own Red Wallace novel right? Because, like, it's my book <laughs> that I'm asking the computer to write for me, so I can do what I want, right? I'm like, well, we've had uh, squirrels be the main character, we've had otters be the main character, we've had ferrets be the main character, we've had foxes be the main character, we've had mice, of course, badgers. Uh, I don't know if we've ever had any of the moles really be main characters. Oh no, maybe we did. I can't, dude, there's, I, there's been so many, there's tw so many books, 20 plus books, uh, and he did, I think he did almost pretty much every permutation of like having one of the main characters be a cute animal <laughs> that you wouldn't expect but he has to be the hero you know like outcast of red wall they like they take in this wounded ferret and this ferret is like raised a red wall and he always thinks he's evil because he's a ferret and ferrets are evil but then he realizes he has to come back and save red wall but um i wanted i wanted to do like what if you had a cat what if it was a cat so um let's do that Let's read this quick article on can an AI write a novel. The question of whether or not artificial intelligence can write a novel is a difficult one to answer. It's not just about the ability to generate text, but all also the ability to generate compelling and engaging plots. It's hard for them to create engaging plots, which is what makes writing novels so challenging. Some use cases. So maybe it can help you with like language. It can maybe help you with like outlining and plot notes, but you're gonna have to come up with a plot and then tell it what it's doing, right? Using AI language models, uh, we can create a story that's not only unique, but also captures the spirit of the Red Wall series. From the heroic mice and woodland creatures to treacherous villains. AI algorithms, AI algorithms we're using have been trained on hundreds of thousands of books, including Red Wall series, not just randomly generated gibberish. Okay, so here I am on the Mid Journey bot, which is a Discord uh, bot that you can use. You can go into the Mid Journey, it's a public server, you can join it, and you can use the service. And I'm imagining, I'm gonna try and get it to imagine Sid the Cat as a Redwall character. I've got a brown tabby cat with a white chin and chest in the style of a Redwall novel. He's wielding a sword. What are these? <laughs> and this, you have to wait for this because it'll, it'll like get all these things. Soon. Oh yes, here we go, look, this is, these are mine. This is me. Here we go. Where'd it go? Oh no, I lost it. What do these buttons do? Oh. <laughs> okay, I do this. I don't know what you mean. Oh, upscaling image one. Oh, yes. All right. <laughs> so there we have it. This will be the cover for our book. Only a few s strange details here, like how oh, does a cat's paw hold a sword? Clearly doesn't really know that. Um, it does know that Sid is chunky. <laughs> The number of toes on some of these feet is a little strange. But when I was a cat with a sword, this is what I wanted for saving. <laughs> Chapter 1 The Riddle of Redwall Said the cat settled into his new home at Redwall Abbey with a contented purr. The community of mice, squirrels, and other woodland creatures welcomed him warmly and made him feel at home. Despite his joy, however, Sid's 
felt a, Sid felt a nagging sense of unease. One day as he was exploring the abbey, Sid stumbled upon an ancient book lying on a shelf in the library. He opened it and read the following riddle. A guardian of Redwall must be wise and strong, with a heart that's true, a spirit that's long. The key to unlock the path that you seek is hidden within, but only you can speak. Sid, were, Sid was puzzled by the riddle, and he didn't know what it meant. He spent days and nights in the library poring over books and talking to the abbey as elders, but he could find no answer. One night, as he lay in bed, he had a vivid dream. In the dream, he saw a vision of Martin the Warrior, the legendary protector of Redwall. Martin spoke to him and said, Sid, the answer to the riddle lies within you. You must trust in yourself and have faith in the power of your spirit. Sid awoke with a start, understanding at last what the riddle meant. He quickly dressed and raced to the library, where he found a secret door hidden behind a bookshelf. In a rush of excitement, he stepped through the door and into a dark, winding tunnel. At the end of the tunnel, Sid came to a chamber filled with light. In the center of the, bed cha of the chamber was a pedestal holding a key. With a shaking paw, Sid reached out and took the key. As he held the key, a voice spoke in his mind, You have passed the test, Sid. You are the newest protector of Redwall, chosen by fate and Martin the warrior himself. Your destiny is to defend the Abbey and its residents against all threats now and forevermore sense of awe and responsibility, Sid accepted his destiny and vowed to always be true to his calling. He knew that he had a great task ahead of him, but he also knew that he was ready to meet any challenge that lay in his path. But just like any AI, it's a totally obedient moron. You might have heard that term where it's only, it, it only can work with the information you give it. So if you need it to write in a certain style, then you have to tell it that. If you need it to write about certain facts, it needs you to give it the relevant facts. It can do some research, as we've seen. It, it did a lot of research on the books, and it did write a book that, or a, a part of a chapter <laughs> that was reminiscent. It had all the hallmarks, you know, a mouse with an M name, another mouse in need, that kind of stuff. I, don't, I just don't know. I don't know if we'll ever be able to really recreate any true, no you know, any novel like that. So do I recommend this to you? If you're trying to recreate the work of a dead author, maybe, maybe for fun. But I think it's going to require just as much work as writing a novel, meaning developing characters, developing plot, and, you know, spanning a whole i mean these books are over 800 pages long some of them and um i mean they're massive <laughs> for kids books so for ai to get to the part get to the point where it can write that whole book book i think we're still a little ways away but again as i keep saying as i keep making videos about it's an incredible tool thanks for watching guys please like and, listen, like and subscribe uh, tell me in the comments if you read any of the Redwall books as a kid, if you're still reading them. Um, I think I have to go back and read a few because I missed some, it appears. So anyway, thanks for watching.